As a software developer, you are making a career out of solving problems with software. Some of the problems you have to deal with are about how you create the software that your employer or client are paying you for. One specific problem is how to manage building your software. Building software encompasses a range of tasks. A build management system can handle many of these tasks for you so you can get back to coding that perfect for loop. The result of a software build is executable code. The executable code consists of what you have written, the Java runtime library, and any other libraries or frameworks. These libraries and frameworks may be code you wrote for another project, or code from other programmers that must be available to your executable code. These are part of what is referred to as the dependencies of your program. This semester we will be using a number of libraries and frameworks. Among them will be JODMail for simplifying the coding for sending and receiving email, we will use Log4J and SLF4J for creating log files to contain messages produced by your code while it runs. No more system.out.println. Then there is the MySQL JDBC driver to allow access to a MySQL relational database management system using either special methods or SQL. One library that every program you write should include is JUnit, a framework to simplify the task of writing unit tests. Some of these libraries exist as a single JAR file. Others have their own dependencies that require adding additional libraries and frameworks. Therefore, to make your program work, you must locate and download all the necessary files and place them in the class path of your build. This is not a simple task. Making it even more difficult is determining if you have the most up-to-date version of a library. Let's take a moment and review just what the class path is for a Java application. A class path is the total of all folders that either the Java compiler or virtual machine will examine when looking for anything that is not part of the code you have written. You might think that an import statement is the class path, but if the class is in a JAR file, then Java has no idea where the JAR file is located. A build system manages the class path for you. When you use an IDE, you get used to just clicking on Run to see the results. A build system gives you much finer control over the process of going from source code to executable code. You can begin the build by cleaning your code. That means to delete all previous compiled class files. When it comes to running the code, do you want to run the class files, ignoring the jar, or do you want to run the code in the jar? And then there is unit testing. In the screencast on unit testing, I will tell you how testing is mandatory. If you have to write the tests, then you have to run the tests. A build system will run your tests for you and present you with a report on their outcome. Another aspect of building software is how the software will be assembled into something that can be distributed. The most common format is a JAR file. Should the third-party JARs be part of your final JAR or not can be controlled by the build system. If you want to double-click on a JAR to run it on any system, then it must be an executable JAR. Starting with Java 8, you also have the option of creating an executable file for Windows, an MSI installer for Windows, or a DMG installer for Apple OS X. 
Hiding behind every major IDE is a build system. When you create a project in one IDE, the format of that project is not compatible with other IDEs. Some of these IDEs have converters for other project formats, but not all do. And then, what about the bare-knuckle programmer, who just uses a text editor and works from the command line? In my courses, we will solve all these problems and more by using the build system called Maven. It's not the only such system. Another widely used build system is called Gradle. Much like learning a single programming language, once you understand how one build system works, you will be able to quickly adopt another system. Maven is a Yiddish word meaning accumulator of knowledge. To learn more about what it is in general principles, visit its website at maven.apache.org. We will be using Maven and that will be the topic of the next screencast.